Hello, in this video we want to look at some examples related to Gauss-Jordan elimination. So first of all, let's look at a definition. A consistent linear system has at least one solution. For example, it has a unique solution or maybe infinitely many solutions. And an inconsistent system has no solutions. Now, for Gauss-Jordan elimination, there's really two steps. The first step is to write the augmented matrix for the system. And then step two is to use the three elementary row operations. And by that I mean you can add two rows, you could multiply a row by a non-zero scalar, or you could interchange two rows. All right, so step two is to use any of those three elementary row operations to achieve reduced echelon form. And some tips here, you want to work on column one first. Also, I recommend getting the leading one in the column first, and then use the row with the leading one to get zeros in the rest of the column. So let me show you an example of what I mean. So for this example, we want to solve the system given by these three equations. And so I'm going to put that in an augmented matrix. So first of all, let's write down our coefficients. The coefficients here are 2, 3, and 1. And then the constant for that first equation is 3. The second equation is going to be a 1, 1, 1. Constant term is 2. And lastly, we've got a 1, negative 1, negative 2, and a negative 6. Okay, now our goal is to work on column 1 first. And in that column, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a leading 1 in this first row, first column position. And right now I've got a 2 in there, and I don't want that 2 to be there. So you could certainly divide everybody by 2, or rather multiply by 1 half, but that's going to introduce a lot of fractions. So a better strategy is to interchange row 1 and row 2. So I'm going to write row 1 interchange with row 2. And if we do that operation, that's going to give us row 1 with a 1, 1, 1 constant term 2, row 2 is a 2, 3, 1, constant of a 3, and the last row 1, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 6. So now this looks really good because in our first column we've got a leading 1 right where we want it in that first row, first column position. Next thing we want to do is we want to use that leading 1 to kind of knock out the rest of these entries in that column. We want to get zeros in here. So Let's multiply negative 2 times row 1, and we'll add that to row 2. And we'll put the result in row 2. So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to take a negative 2 and multiply it here by this first row. So first row ultimately will be unchanged. The second row is going to be, let's see, negative 2 times 1 plus a 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. We got a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And we get negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Now we also want to get rid of the 1 down there in the third row. So to get rid of that, let's use a different color, we could go negative 1 times r. 1 plus r2, r3, excuse me, and we'll stuff that in row 3. So here we go. Now we're going to multiply by a negative 1. So multiplying by negative 1, we're going to get a 0 for that third row. Next, we'll get a negative 2. Next, we'll get a negative 1 times 1 plus a negative 2 gives us negative 3. And lastly, we get a negative 8. Okay, so first column looks great. We have our 1 in the first row, first, first column, and we've got zeros everywhere else. For our second column, let's focus on the second column. We want to get a 1 in the second row, second column, and we've got that. Let's use that 1 to clear out the rest of that column. 
Okay, so first thing let's do, let's go um, negative 1 times row 2 and we'll add that to row 1 and put the result in row 1. And I'm going to go down to the next line here so that we can see where this leads. Second row is unchanged, so let's write that down. And now let's see what happens to our first row. The, the new first row is going to be the result of this uh, linear combination here. So we're going to go negative 1, negative 1 times row 2 and add that to row 1. So we get a 1, 0. Next we get negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, plus 1 it gives us a 2. And lastly, we get a negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 plus 2 is 3. And for the bottom row, let's see, we want to get rid of that negative 2. So let's multiply 2 times row 2, add it to row 3, and we'll put the result in row 3. Here we go with that step. So we're going to go 2 times this second row. And let's see what we get. We get 0. We get 0, which is good. That's what we wanted. Next, we're going to have 2 times a negative 1, which is negative 2, plus a negative 3 is negative 5. And then we get negative 2 plus a negative 8 gives us negative 10. So we're doing really well. Um, our first and second column are all set. Those look beautiful. And now we're working on the third row, third column. We want that to be a leading one, and then we'll want to get zeros for all the other entries in that column. Now we're, we're pretty much out of moves here. Um, in terms of you know adding things or interchanging rows try to make that a one so we are going to have to multiply by a negative one-fifth but that's okay we won't get any fractions so um, turns out to actually be a, a really nice computation here so we'll go negative one-fifth times row three and we'll put the result in row three so we'll go negative one-fifth times this third row and the result of that operation, the second and first rows are the same, but the third row here is going to be a 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay. We're almost done. Uh, our last couple of steps here, we need to clean out this third column. We need to get zeros in there. So let's do that by adding row 3 plus row 2 and putting the result in row 2. That'll get rid of that negative 1. So third row is unchanged and this second row is now going to be a 0, 1, 0 and we have a 2 plus a negative 1 so that's going to give us 1 and now to clean out that 2, we'll go negative 2 times row 3, add that to row 1, and put the result in row 1. So here we go with a negative 2. So what do we get here? We still get a 1, we get a 0, and now we get a 0. Lastly, we get negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is a negative 1. Okay, and so what we get at this point, <clears throat> recall that our original variables here were x, y, and z. And we got into this uh, matrix by putting the coefficients for x, y, and z in those first three columns. In other words, getting down to this matrix, this matrix that's in reduced row echelon form, we can read off that 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals negative 1. And for our second equation, we get 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 1. And lastly, 0x plus 0y plus 1z gives us 2. And what that means is that our final uh, answer, our solution for the system, really is x equals negative 1, y equals 1, 
and z equals 2. And this is our final answer. This is our solution. This is a unique solution. And so if you wanted to imagine these three equations um, graphed in three-dimensional space, x, y, and z kind of uh, dimensions there, you would imagine that this unique solution is just the intersection of those um, of, of those equations. You just get one point as your unique solution.